All right, well, let's do a test, and I'm not going to uh, pedal at all. We'll see how fast this thing gets up to. Still accelerating. Ah, oh, just crashed. <laughs> hey guys, last week I saw this really cool video. It's called an e-bike. I thought they were kind of slow, but apparently you can go really fast for them. Here's the video. This is called a Stealth Bomber. This got me really excited, so I ended up looking to see what this thing costs. But the Stealth Bomber is over $10,000. So I know that's really out of my price range. So, I'm going to build one. I think I can do it for less than $500, all brand new. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> there it is. Now this to me is when it gets kind of scary. There's a lot of stuff in there. Lots of wires. Because I'm not really an uh, electrical engineer or anything else. So we're going to have to read the manual on that and watch some videos probably. But that's the controller. Looks like the controller's hooked up to... Uh, oh, look at that. Looks like the uh, throttle there. On and off button, I'm guessing. And it shows the batteries how much charge is left. I think that's like a speed sensor. It lets you know when you're pedaling up to the brakes, which I was reading, will basically disengage your motor, so when I brake, it'll stop the motor, which is probably pretty important. A little bungee, maybe to hold the bag down a little more secure. No idea. Looks like I have two little extra handles and a bike rack. Now these are kind of, I heard these aren't the best. But they do work. Pretty big bag, really. It looks like the sides are expandable. So we'll probably fit the controller on one side. Put the batteries in the center. What are you doing in here? Help clean up, throw it in. There you go. Throw it in, buddy. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Now I need you out, bud. Hey, I don't know if I mentioned this, but disc brake in front, awesome. That means I have to put a disc brake on the back because stopping is really important uh, when you're going 30 miles an hour. I was reading that, we gotta make sure it's really tight in there once we're ready to go. So we just gotta make sure that this uh, little washer has got this edge on it is inside of it. Now on this side I got a washer on that side and I have this locking washer on this side. Let me just tighten the crap out of these. So even though it's a seven speed control gear shifter, as long as you just don't use the last one, it looks like it'll pretty much work, okay? So I, I heard that you can just get those shifters switched out, so that'd probably be the best idea. Um, but it's gonna work for now. So it's in there, I made it really tight, had to use a big uh, wrench on it instead of a socket set, but it seems to be spinning just fine. So um, yeah, I think this build's gonna work out. Looks like the bike rack fits right here. But that looks a little bit low there, so I'm not sure how that's supposed to So here's the problem with the rack doesn't really have a joint right here, so even when it's on right here, it's supposed to bolt into here. But you can see it's not quite fitting. I can't go like that because it's just going to be too much of an angle. So I'm just going to take this and go bend it on my vise. Alright, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna get this bike rack on, but because of this electrical line, I can't actually 
put it on there because of this electrical line and you'd say, well, I'll just run the electrical line through this hole, right? Well, it's got this big square thing and I don't really want to mess with it. So I'm going to actually mount it on top right here. And I've already bent up this, these little uh, forks. So I think it's going to work just fine. I just need to get a bolt uh, through there. And I think I got just the thing. I'm actually going to feed it through with this big washer like that. And that's going to hold just fine. And then just stick another washer on here. So now I realize that this isn't quite level. So I'm trying to bend these down a little bit right now. That's pretty good. There, that's pretty level. I can live with that. What we're gonna do is set our brake on now. And you want it basically where the last ones were. Um, we can tighten it down a little more in a second. But uh, you're just going to tighten it up right there, and then the throttle will go over here, and then your handlebar over here. So your throttle will be here, and you can still grip it, though, like this. So you can have your thumb on the throttle and fingers on the brake. So what you do is you unscrew this little uh, thing here, and then you got to set the line inside of this nut. I'm not really a bite guy, so I'm not even sure this stuff's called. But it uh, should look something like that, then. And then I'm able to insert it right here. This little doodad goes inside there, right? And that goes inside. And then this screws in like so. So now I'm going to install this uh, thumb throttle. It's going to go in there like that. And this wire is just going to have to kind of run along with the. Uh, with the brake controller as well. I'll kind of bind those together back along here. And the shifter will go on as well. Now, my original handlebar is a little longer than this. It's about that length right there. So I should be able to shift all this down just a little bit. So that way it all fits on there correctly again. Now these are always hard to get on. One little trick is to stick an air compressor in this little hole right here, blow into it, and then it'll push on real easy. I did it to get it off and it worked surprisingly well. But pushing on is a little easier than pulling off, so I think I can just work this on. So you have these three lines. You got ex your acceleration, right brake, left brake. So you're gonna have to take these and figure a way to kind of tuck them back to get to your controller unit. But uh, it went on surprisingly easy. So now I just gotta use my Allen wrench and tighten this all up. I'm gonna leave it loose now though, and I wanna make sure everything's working before I tighten things down. You gotta put it in the bag. It's got some Velcro on the bottom there. So you just put those loops around and just kinda center it up on there. I'll give you this wiring um, guide for the controller, and uh, it, it looks like it's accurate and everything. So I'm gonna just basically connect everything according to the color. And they even give you this little hub so you can connect all the motor connections to the controller. Uh, so it looks like it's supposed to, so it doesn't touch or anything like that. You just put these on top of, on top. It's kind of a stretch here. But basically I can put these on each hole. So now what I have to do is take the wires from both brakes and the throttle and get them into the bag. So I'm not worried about zip tying them yet. I'm just gonna get them in there and get all wired together. So in case I need to make some changes, I can. So I'm just gonna pull all those in, right? And you're gonna have to have some slack because when you turn and things like that, you're gonna have to have yeah, room for some movement there. I'm gonna pull those in. And also here's the motor, um, you know, the control and also the power as well. 
So I'm just going to kind of run that up behind the brake here. And I'll probably end up zip tying it right there. And then sticking it through right here. I'm not using the pass system. Here, it's not really that necessary anyways, so I'm just not going to use it. So I'm going to start hooking up the electrical. I got all the wires coming through. Next, actually have this little side hole right here, so that way I can run the wires out here. And I'm going to try to fit the controller right here. There's not going to be much room, but I think it'll work just fine now. Connecting the motor right here. That's the controls for the motor. And I also have throttle. Pretty much it can only go in one spot, so you can't really screw this step up. But there we are. So I only need these three now. So it's gonna be for to the motor and then these two to the battery. There. I have power from the controller to the motor. You just put this on top. Like so. And you screw it on. There we go. And the last part is getting power to the batteries. So I just need to uh, connect these. I think what I need to do though is strip these off and uh, wire it with what I have. I don't have these type of connectors. So we're going to have to wire these guys together to get our 48 volts. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it a series. It means we're going to connect negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. So we need some 12 gauge wire and we'll need wire cutter, crimper, or deglover, or whatever you call those things. Well, that much is good. So the way this works is we're gonna have these because these actually fit on like that. So this is a 10 gauge wire and a 10 gauge connector. All right, so we got this side done and basically we just gotta go from here to here so we can keep this pretty darn short. So I'm just gonna kinda estimate right here. Something like that would work pretty well. So I'm just gonna cut it in that spot. There it is. Here is 48 volts, 12 a piece, and we have them parallel, so negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, and these will be the two terminals that go to the motor. So what I'd like to do is, these are all gonna be in a series now, so I don't want them to shift around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put saran wrap around it and then duct tape around it, uh, because I don't want the duct tape touching it, so it comes off easy, but duct tape's gonna be a lot stronger to keep it all together uh, than just saran wrap. It's pretty solid. I mean, I think it's good. All right, so we got a battery in here. I got them connected in a series. And now I just have these two connections here coming from the controller. And like I did on this side, I'm just gonna snip this off because I don't have that type of connector. And I'm just gonna use wire nuts instead and put a couple of these on here. So we need to strip these off. Feels pretty good. So now it just connects to the battery. Positive to positive. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. One thing to note is this is obviously red, red, and this one's black, so I gotta make sure I use negative on here, but I only have red wires, so I'm gonna need to make sure that I always hook it up to the, the correct one. Alright, so everything's together. And uh have to zip zip strip a few things, but uh let's try to put this on now. It's a little bit tricky now because I'm I want the wire long enough so it's got some room and it can flex and things like that. Woo! But, uh, there. Now that's on. Makes a cycle. So let's back up and see if this thing works. Alright, moment of truth. Back this up. Wow, it's heavy now. That motor's about 30 pounds and battery's another 32 pounds. So, uh, Click this on, lift the back end. Oh, it works! 
It works! Nice! Very cool. I'm really excited to go outside and try this thing out. Well, there we go. It's all done now. So, the bike was $120, the batteries were $100, and the motor and wiring harness and controller unit was $240, so that ends up being $460 for this entire setup. And so, um, you know, I could go with a better battery, but, uh, you know, you can always spend more because a new battery is going to cost you three, four, five, six hundred dollars. So uh, if you're trying to keep the cost down and just try this out. This is a great setup. So had to do some modifications, but it worked really well. And uh, good luck on making yours. And if you like this video, please subscribe, and maybe I'll make some more videos like this that uh, show you just how to make some cool things. Thanks. Works really well. <laughs>